In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the inverse of a logarithm. If you have watched my videos on exponential functions or know anything about an exponential function, you know that the inverse of an exponential function is a log. So therefore, the inverse of a log should be an exponential function. So let's see what happens. Let's see if we get an exponential function when we try and find the inverse of a log. In order to find the inverse of any function, you're always swapping or switching x and y. They just swap spots. And then whenever you solve for a function, you want to solve for y. Uh, so there's only going to be one extra step here in addition to all of this. To find the inverse of a log, it helps if you put it in exponent form. So we'll do an example here. Let's say that we got a log function that is log base 3 of x. Well, we know that our function name, or f of x, is always in replace of y. That's the output, so we might as well just make it y instead. And now we're going to do our first step, swap x and y. So I'm going to write x equals log base 3 of y instead. So all we did is make that little swap. Now in order to solve for y, it's not very easy in this form. That's why we need to put it into exponent form. So we're going to use our circle method or our rolling method. Start with the base, go to the other side of the equal sign, and come back around. So we're going to say 3 to the x power is y. Well, did we solve for y? Yeah. Is it in the form of an exponent? Yep. So there's our inverse right there. The inverse of this log is 3 to some power. Seems easy enough. Let's try another one. This time I'm going to try and get crazy with you and use an, a natural log instead. So let's see if you know the base of a natural log. So instead of our function name, we're going to use y. We can rewrite our natural log using our base. So natural log has a base of e, if you remember. Okay, now we're ready to swap x and y. Say x equals log base e of y plus 1. And now we can use our circle method to rewrite it in exponential form and finish our solution here. So we got e to the x, so come back around to the other side, equals y plus 1. Um, so we don't quite have y by itself yet. That's our last step. So in order to do that, we just got to get rid of 1, move it to the other side by subtracting. So now we finally get y is e to the x minus 1. Be careful there. Uh, when you subtract 1, that doesn't mean that it goes up to the exponent. It's e to the x minus 1. Minus 1 is on the outside here. It's not part of our exponent. So there's the inverse e to the x minus 1. Um, you could also write, instead of y, you could use your inverse function name, if you remember what that is. So you could also write it as the inverse of f of x is equal to e to the x minus 1, which would probably be a better way of writing it, but it's up to you or your teacher or whatever you're doing. All right, let's do a couple more examples since we got time. Let's do f of x. Let's do a natural log this time. I haven't seen that yet. And that should be good. All right. Instead of the function name, right? Why? If you need to visualize it, write base 10 for a common log. And now we can use our circle method. 
Oops, first swap, my bad. Swap first, otherwise it doesn't work. So we're going to say x equals, instead of y equals, y minus 3 this time. Now I use the circle method. Circle around to the other side of the equal sign, and back over. So we get uh, 10 to the x power is equal to y minus 3. Solve for y. Just add 3 to both sides. So y or the inverse of x is equal to 10 to the x power plus 3. Alright, so good luck finding inverses of logarithmic functions.